Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, it is the first post-COVID event that we're doing in person, and I'm grateful to be climbing out of from under my rock. So our objectives today are to understand the importance of following a standardized anatomic imaging protocol. I want you to be able to recognize the three most commonly available practice parameters, and we're going to spend the majority of our time discussing the detailed diagnostic obstetrical ultrasound practice parameter that was recently published by the AIUM. So over 20 years ago, our colleagues at the Royal Free Hospital in London reported on the successful visualization of a variety of anatomic features, demonstrating that by 12 weeks gestation, the majority of structures could be visualized. Slow forward 20 years. They also showed us that our success in visualization was optimal at 13 weeks, and it was at that time period that we had the highest detection rate or visualization rate with a reasonable uh, understanding of how often we needed to use transvaginal sonography to obtain those images. So are there benefits from utilizing a systematic evaluation, a scanning protocol? In this study, which was a meta-analysis and review, the anomaly detection rate in low-risk and unselected patients was 32% overall, and 46% of major anomalies were identified. In the high-risk population, 61% of anomalies were identified. Furthermore, there was a trend suggesting that the more detailed a protocol, the higher the detection rate of anomalies. This was happened regardless of whether we were looking at a low-risk or a high-risk population. In another uh, study of a very large number of fetuses, over 78,000, the same sweet spot for identifying anatomic features was noted at 13 weeks. The pooled anomaly detection rate, however, by route of imaging is a little bit more variable. But data from this paper suggests that it to be about 50% for the transabdominal approach alone, 34% for the transvaginal approach, and the combination of the approaches was more efficacious in the detection of anomalies. Certainly, some things are easier to see than others. We're able to pick up anomalies of the neck and the abdomen in a high percentage of cases, while abnormalities of the face and the limbs are not seen quite as frequently.